friends and welcome to today's video. So the first time that I walked through this house, I was a little taken aback because as soon as you walk through the front door, you are greeted by this one person movie theater or what I call the dollhouse. This was a room that was essentially, and room is being very generous to be honest, <laughs> it was a space that was used by the children of this house formerly as a one person, maybe two person movie theater where you can kind of have this little cave experience watching movies which I think is really cool but for two grown adults it wasn't quite gonna cut it and since this area was gonna be the first impression almost that people have coming to our home I wanted it to be something very beautiful and special and I thought there was nothing better than to turn it into a reading nook. So back in December this has been a project I've been working on for a long time on and off we got to tearing down this dollhouse. I got to work to also remove the bench that was inside. There was like this platform with some foam and I also removed all of this carpet. It was nasty in there, but luckily it got all cleaned up and it looks a lot better now. And the moment we had gotten rid of all that structure, I was just so insanely excited. It opened up the space tremendously. Our house is quite small, so any bit of illusion of more space that we can bring to it, I'll take it. Now along with this project, I'm also working on the dining room, so you will see this on another video, but I had already replaced the drywall on this one wall, but since part of it was still hidden, by the dollhouse I had to go in I wanted to see first if there was any salvageable drywall so I tried peeling off the wallpaper a little bit and it just wasn't really working so I had the blissful experience of taking the crowbar to the drywall it's just so fun to destroy things sometimes There was drywall on one side but the other side was still wood and I thought that it would look best to have it kind of feel a little cave-like still and I wanted to add drywall to the wood side as well. So I had to take on the task of trying to fit and cut out a piece of drywall to this odd triangular shape. So obviously I'm not a contractor, I have put up a lot of drywall in our house and I've learned a lot but I probably don't have the best top-notch techniques of the biz. So the way that I very roughly decided to go about this was to take measurements of all the sides. There is a flat edge to the triangle at the bottom because that's where the bench starts. Did want to account for it to go under about an inch or so because there is a gap and I didn't want it to look weird that there was just like a void after the drywall. I knew that one of the angles of the triangle was a 90 degree angle. So I just had to figure out the angle of the top. So what I did was I took a piece of paper and I measured it to the size of that angle at the top of the area. I tried to make sure that it fit as best as possible because I know that as the longer I draw the line, if there are any disruptancies, the more it's gonna compound on itself. I glued this piece of paper onto a piece of cardboard so I can make a much larger, much sturdier template and just use a ruler to continue that line down. Now for my piece of drywall, I am first going in and marking all of the lengths that I had originally taken. So I'm marking the distance from top to bottom, from angle one to angle two, and from angle two to the bottom. And then also the width of that bottom blunt end. That way I have the actual guidelines of where these angles are supposed to meet up, one being 90, the other one being my template. 
And this method worked pretty well. I think I had to make a slight adjustment, so I ended up using different colored pencils so I knew which line was the correct one to cut when I had to actually go ahead and use my X-Acto knife. Now, when it comes to breaking off drywall, it is so easy. All you have to do is score the front side with your X-Acto knife, and then you are going to take the piece of drywall and snap it back on itself. It's not going to completely come off and there will be just a little bit of the construction paper type material in the back. You're going to take your X-Acto knife and score that. It should be very easy to see since you have it bent in on itself. And once you do that, you push out against it and it snaps right off. Now maybe my explanation is really bad. I'm really bad at describing things, but hopefully the visual will help give you an idea. Of how One of the many quirky things about this house is that there's a lot of exposed pipes and wires. I wanted to hide them, but I also had to move them out of the way so I could properly install the drywall. So I went ahead and removed these staples so that these wires for the light box and for the light itself weren't showing. And somehow, the genius that I am, I forgot to film the moment that I actually hid these. So I'll just explain it really quickly. Right next to this wall, there's a pantry. So I cut a hole straight through across to the pantry, which took more time than I thought because there's some insulation and stuffs in the middle. And I rerouted the wires through the pantry all the way up and then back out where I ended up installing some lights. But you screw all everything in place about a foot apart, each screw. And then you go back and forth between applying mud and sanding it down just so that you can cover all of the screw heads so that when you go to paint it looks like a perfectly smooth surface. At this time I decided I should get to work on building a tufted couch. And then I also made some complimentary pillows. I have videos going much more in depth on both of those projects. If you do want to check them out I will link those as well. Lastly, what is a reading nook without a place to store your books? One of the things I was a little intimidated by is that if you have noticed, with all these weird angles, this isn't a perfectly straight up and down wall. So hanging these shelves was something that I was a little intimidated to do. Thankfully, after much searching, I found 135 degree angle brackets. Thank goodness, because I, my original idea would have taken an eternity and there's things I like to spend a lot of time on, and there's other things that I just want the path of least resistance because I really don't care about how something's hung up, I just want it to be there. And now comes my favorite part. For the bookshelves, I thought I wanted to give it a little extra oomph than just having these slabs of wood. So I thought about with some of the extra scrap fabric that I had from this project, I could make these, I'm gonna call them scrolls. If there's a better, more proper term for it, please let me know. Anyway, I wanted to do these beautiful scrolls that would add just a little bit of elegance and uniqueness to the bookshelves. I did spend like a good hour trying to come up with a design on Illustrator. Nothing was going right. I really wanted to use it just so that it would help me with the symmetry of it all. But honestly, just like when I did my cornice, it's just so much easier just to take <laughs> pencil to paper. Drawing it out and sketching it just comes so much more natural to me. But it's really fun just to go through the process of experimenting. There's a lot of erasing back and forth, and then all of a sudden it just starts flowing. So because I wanted this pattern to be mirrored, I only bothered drawing one side. That way I just have to cut it out, very carefully fold it in half, and then just trace it on the other side. After I've cut out my one template, I use some nuts, washers, I can't remember which one, to hold down the paper so that it wasn't moving all over the place as I traced it out. And then I just use a sharpie because I'm going to be going in and cutting this. I want the line to be very obvious and easy to see. And so I go ahead and trace out my template on all four pieces of wood that I have. And now comes the really fun part. So I just purchased this multi-purpose rotary cutting 
attachment for my Dremel tool. And this allows me to cut into the wood. I'm using one of the pieces I've already cut for the bookshelves to be my stabilizing piece of wood. Also, because I didn't want things moving, I wanted things to be as secure and stable as possible so I don't cut off a finger. I use a 10 pound weight. I wanted to add a guideline so I wouldn't get carried away and accidentally eat into the piece of wood that I'm actually using as the shelf. I kind of look crazy, but my hair goes up, I'm wearing a mask, I have goggles on, and I put on gloves just to make sure nothing happens, and I make sure that I can see my hands at all times, and that I try to be as careful as possible. I notice that with sewing, with this, with any kind of project, it's good to be rested and refreshed, don't do it when you're tired, eat so you make sure you're not being shaky, and then just go so much slower than you think, because it is so easy to get cocky with it. I've done this. You think that you are just the best at this and then you get too cocky and you make a mistake and then you regret it and you can't add wood back once you've cut into it. In order to enter the wood properly, you have to hold the bit at a 45 degree angle and then very slowly straighten it up and then you can continue on cutting. Because this isn't a perfectly smooth cut, it's actually really, really rough. I'm using a sanding bit on my Dremel tool to sand. I'm starting off with a very, very coarse grit just to get rid of, again, all those chunks and things that are really bad and then escalating to a much finer one for the ultimate polishing. I ended up doing a lot of that also by hand because there were some crevices where the bit was just too big to get into. I did end up switching from the sponge thing to brush. It worked a lot better. And I did use a very small like paintbrush for the scrolls to make sure that I could get into all those little crevices. And now it's time to assemble everything. I went ahead and attached the shelves to the wall using my 135 degree angle brackets. I used one screw that was pretty long that was for wood, a wood screw, and then I used a bolt with a nut and washer to attach it to the shelf itself. Well, thank you so much friends for joining me on this project. I hope that you enjoyed it. I have a fun video coming next week and I hope that you'll join me for that as well. But until then, I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye.